everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to play with a really fun yarn base. We will be dyeing Wool to Dye For's Donegal White Nep Sock Yarn. This is a really interesting yarn base that has superwash merino wool and then some cotton acrylic neps, which will give us a pastel white pops of color in the end. I have dyed this base a few times looking at it with deeper tones and also I believe I dip dyed to break Wilton's Violet at one point. And so I'm very excited to see what we can create with this base if we use brighter neon colors. Before I jump in to talk a little bit more about the yarn and today's project, I would like to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, JCD Cole. JC, thank you so much for being my lab partner. And while I have all of your attention, please subscribe. When you look at the bare yarn, you can barely see some of the white naps. And these will pop more once we dye the yarn. The fiber content of this yarn is 84% superwash merino, 26% cotton acrylic naps. Now, the cotton content can't really be dyed with acid dyes, but it does take up some staining. So the final color of the naps usually is not the same color as they are right now. Uh, oftentimes they end up being, like say when I over dyed with navy, the nets ended up being more of a pastel blue color against the deeper blue. The other thing to note is that the cotton and acrylic content goes through all of the fibers in the yarn. And so that does shift the colors that you see when we're dyeing this yarn, a little bit at least. I'm pre-soaking the yarn with white neps in some plain tap water for at least 30 minutes, so it's nice and saturated ahead of our dyeing process. But I'm also pre-soaking a skein of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. And unlike the acrylic cotton fiber that doesn't really pick up color with acid dyes, the nylon does. And so all of the fiber in the stroll will pick up colors. And so we will likely see some either hue or depth of shade type differences when we compare the yarn at the end. But I thought it would be fun to have this in the dye pot for a fun comparison. If you would like to learn more about the yarn bases or other tools and equipment I am using in my video, I have a bunch of links down in the video description. Some are affiliate links like for Knit Picks and Amazon, but I also have links to Will to Die For and other things that aren't affiliate links. So that way you can get the tools and materials I use if you would like to try to replicate my results. But now we need to go decide on what colors and technique we want to use. For our bright neon colors, we are gonna be playing with both some fluorescent acid dyes and a blue, because there isn't a fluorescent blue in Dharma's line. We're gonna be playing with purple pop, radioactive, a little bit of fluorescent lemon, and then some Caribbean blue. Now with all of these colors, the little bit goes a very long way, and so that is always worth keeping in mind. I think that I want to have like a blue, a green, and a purple here today. And so we're going to start uh, in the middle with the blue. And I'm just going to add a little bit of the Caribbean blue to this. And that'll give us a really nice blue. Uh, now for our green, we may as well start with a little bit of radioactive I have on hand. Now, there isn't a fluorescent green pigment either. What I think we have here is really uh, some fluorescent lemon with a blue pigment in there. So I am also gonna add a little bit of fluorescent lemon and then a little bit of Caribbean blue. And we are very, very much going by feel uh, it'll be hard to mix up more of the colors, but if we need more color, then we can just uh, add, mix another green or something and then use that. But we can sort of stir this up to check and see. That is a very beautiful neon green and it's a different green than say just radioactive would be, which feels a little bit more like acid green. And then for our purple, 
We're gonna start with some purple pop, but this is a very pink color. A very, very pink color. It does break beautifully, but you'll see, I mean, that's purple pop. It's very, very pink. So to this one, I'm also gonna add a little bit, just a little bit of some blue. A little bit of some blue could give us sort of like a, a neon purple kind of effect. And now, uh, I think I'm gonna add another half cup of water to each of these so that way there's more volume for me to apply to the yarn. But then we can start dyeing the yarn. Today we are going to apply the dye cold. Cold with no acid and then we will add acid and take it over to the stove to heat set. But let's go ahead and start with our blue color. And so there has not been any water in here yet beyond what I have just added. And so now I can press the color through and sort of move it through the yarn a bit. And you can see that we're getting pretty good coverage here. Now it helps that the colors that we are working with today are colors that need more acid heat and time to set overall. <laughs> so that is sort of working in our favor a bit here. Uh, but I can flip the yarn and then in areas where, oh, I would like a little bit more color, we can come in and add that color and sort of massage it in. Sometimes this is a hand painting technique I might do followed by say steam setting, but eventually I think we'll be adding enough liquid into our yarn that we can uh, do an immersion heat. And if not, if it ends up not being dripping, then we can make the choice to go ahead and steam set this yarn. There's nothing to prevent us from doing that. Now with our green, I'm gonna focus these initial pores to the end, oh, that's such a pretty green. But then we can work this color further down eventually to uh, combine a little bit with the blue. But we'll just see how far these colors are going. And then even, you know, we can flip the subset of our color to add a little bit more but you can see now as I'm squishing it, we're starting to get more liquid in these areas. And so little by little, uh, we are increasing the total water volume we have in here. But we'll focus on this intermediate section uh, once we have added more color. Let's go to our purple. And see, as I'm doing that, we may as well stretch this out to give us a little bit more room to work with. And once again, I mean, if I walk around, then it's a little bit less awkward to try to pour it as much as possible. And here, aha, here we see some breaking. They're already, there is no acid in here. And we can see the pink separating from that little bit of blue. I don't know what the blue pigment is in the purple pop. But, oh, okay, it did sort of soak through um, a fair amount. But that just always, like, tickles me uh, how, how much it does that. But I am just helping this color work through a bit. And so, yeah, they'll be the most breaking over in our purple section, which also seems to be the least pigmented overall. I think I maybe added less uh, dye there because purple pop is a little bit frightening sometimes. So now I'm working, since we're on the purple section anyway, working and bringing more of this color towards the blue but you can see that there is still a fair amount of color over here. When I squish it, it's not looking clear yet. Uh, and so, yeah, but again, we have no acid in here. 
And so once we add that acid, then some of these colors may start striking, but this allows us to get some coverage to start with. And I do want to rinse the hands before going back to the green. But yeah, the water level is still pretty low. Oh, you may have some transfer instructions, which is okay. I don't mind if it's not perfect. But I should now, when I'm like flipping and moving things, take care and pay a little bit of attention to it. Okay, I think that the blue sort of needed here at the interface with the purple. And again, I can always mix up a little bit more uh, depending on what is needed. But yeah, I'm checking for areas that are a little bit lighter. We will be, once we add the acid, we will be working the colors through everywhere again, but yeah, when I press, I see that blue color. So we are able to spread it out really, really nicely. And then for the rest of our green, sort of putting it there. Huh, for dying by feel, I sure picked a reasonable amount of the colors. I'm pretty happy. But now I wanna start adding some acid. And so what I'm gonna do is with our three cups that are a little bit off camera, so you can't see it, <laughs> but they are mostly empty. But I'm gonna add two tablespoons of vinegar to each one and half a cup of water. And so this way, when we add the acid on to the yarn, uh, we can spread it out a bit more we're also increasing the water volume that we have in here, so that way we can just take the steamer basket over to the stove. Oh, funny, I'm seeing those pinks spread. Uh, yeah, and so all of that will help, but I do want to quickly sort of press it through, working from the blue to our other colors. and. There's not a ton of water here. I will probably increase the volume again in a little bit. But now, let's take this over to the stove. Okay, I'm gonna turn the heat on medium. We are across two gas burners on my stove. I will be reducing it to low after a little bit, but I'm also going to, at this time, cover the pan with some tin foil so that way we can trap some of the steam and the heat in here. But I'm going to check back in in about 10 minutes. It has been 10 minutes and we are nice and steamy. And actually the green is looking pretty clear. The blue is looking pretty clear. And I only see a hint of pink over there. Goodness, maybe I should cover things more often. <laughs> Uh, but I do want to add some more water. I feel like we have plenty of acid, so I'm not worried about that, but I do just want a little bit more water in here. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and heat this for another 20 minutes, but it looks like things are setting really, really well. The 20 minutes are up, and I've used this foil a lot and just rinsed it, but the yarn looks great. It looks really, really good. I am gonna now turn off the heat, and I think I'll put the cover back on while things cool. Now, we do see some of the white naps. Let me zoom in. You can sort of see them around here, but they should have a bit more contrast once we've washed the yarn and it's dry. But since the colors aren't that deep, it, who knows, we may not end up with very much contrast at all. Color-wise, the yarn with the white neps and the stroll look incredibly similar right now, but again, that may change once we've washed and dried the yarn. We will have to see. But I do wanna let the yarn cool completely before we go and wash it. Let's wash this yarn. This colorway is so happy. 
I adore the green. The purple probably could feel a little bit more neon. I don't know if I needed like maybe more pink, but the green is perfect. Uh, the white nuts aren't popping a ton. Oh dear, that's a tie. The white nuts aren't popping a ton yet, but they are present. You can see them. The good news is that I don't see any bleeding yet, but let's add a little bit of some dish soap and see. Oh dear. No, we are doing. All right, there is no color bleeding. So I'm gonna finish rinsing out the soap, then I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it to dry. But I do wanna note that right now, all of the colors look the same, whether it's on the stroll or our yarn with the white naps. Here is the finished dry yarn. And I don't know if this is picking up well on camera, but I can see the white naps from where I am standing, and my eyes are higher up than where the camera lens is. But I'm not sure. Like, you can kind of see them on the monitor. I have the stroll in between the two skeins with white naps, and the naps are definitely subtle. Um, it's subtle, the contrast isn't super high. I do think they show up a little bit better on the blue and the purple than they do on the green. No matter what, they are present. And what is really entertaining me right now is that I really, really like the white naps here. And this surprises me a lot. So when I first heard of this base, I thought, okay, here's our chance for like starry night. This is our best opportunity to get white speckles on super dark yarn. And it didn't quite work out that way, partly because at the same depth of shade, because there's the acrylic and cotton running through the yarn, the final color is less intense uh, because those other fibers are present, which makes it heathered and cool, but it makes the, the base color a little bit more muted. And then since the naps take up a little bit of color, then they aren't like a pure white against what other color you have, so that reduced the contrast that I was originally hoping for. But in this circumstance, we have less contrast. Uh, we have these pastel naps on this brighter base, but a base that's overall less saturated than things I've tried with this in the past. And I think that it works a lot better. I think that it adds some fun to it. And if we used a traditional Donegal base where we had, say, tan, black, and like gray naps in there. I don't, I think it would still be pretty on this base, but I might not like it as much because it rather than complementing the brights that we have here, it would stand out a little bit more and maybe not compete, but it would just be different. And so I think that brights are the way to go with this kind of nap. I think that it really does, I feel like the naps are enhancing and supporting the colorway in a nice subtle way versus competing with it. And so I'm really, really happy. The other thing I'm really happy about in general is just the tone of the colors that we have here. And the tone of the colors between the yarn with our naps and the stroll. Yes, there might be some very subtle differences in the exact hue of the colors, but saturation-wise, it feels very, very similar, which is not what I saw with navy. And I believe I did dye those separately to try to make sure I had the same depth of shade in the different colors. And this actually brings me to another question that sometimes I get. If you are gonna dye different yarn bases side by side in a dye kettle with more water, then if there are fibers present, like say superwash merino, that absorb color faster than say non-superwash silk, you will see more pigment go into the wool and that does shift the results. It doesn't give you a similar depth of shade on the same yarn kind of comparison. But when you're dealing with something low immersion like this, and yes, we were moving the dyes through the yarn, 
and things aren't exact because you are dying by feel, because the dye isn't gonna travel from where it's placed on one side all the way to the other, that means that the stroll doesn't really have the opportunity to absorb more color than the yarn on either side. And so it is a fair way to do a more quick and dirty comparison because it would still be better to compare things in different pans, different pots. But when you're doing something more by feel versus a recipe, there's a chance with each batch that you might add more of one color than another anyway. So having it all in one pan does give us a good basis for comparison here today. There is one other thing I would like to point out about this base with the white neps. The neps fall out pretty easily. Uh, like when I was going and winding the stroll, I found that there were just some bits of nep on there, which was like lint to pick off. And so I have no idea how these neps would hold up, say in socks with a lot of wear, if they would then become reduced in appearance over time or what. And I'm really just pointing that out in case you're considering getting some of the base so that way it is something that you are aware of. When it comes to Donegal bases, I think that my preference would go the multicolored neps that Wilta Diver offers, and then traditional naps, and then finally followed by this one. While I'm really excited by this colorway, it's just the base isn't my favorite. Don't get me wrong, it's soft and beautiful, but I think that when it comes to dyeing, there are other bases that just excite me more. And that is totally fine for people to have various preferences with things like that. And so that doesn't mean that I'm not really proud of this yarn, but I do want to continue to try to dye different types of yarn bases and fiber types because I think that it's fun to see how different techniques and different kinds of colorways change once you change elements about the base and especially things that are as unique as this one. As dyers and fiber artists, we all have our preferences. Some of us may prefer to dye mostly fingering weight sock yarns. Others may prefer to dye non-superwash fiber for spinning. And so just like we all have those kinds of preferences, the types of bases that as dyers we want to dye and create color ways on, there's also some variation in there and that is totally okay. JCD Cole, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope you are going to enjoy your yarn. As I mentioned, this version of the white nep yarn is probably my favorite that I've done on this base to date, and I love how the colors turned out. One final thing I'd like to comment on are the colors here. The colors that we mixed using brights. Uh, I did use a little bit of purple pop, but we added more blue and I think a more pink to it. Maybe not, definitely at least blue. And the green we mixed with fluorescent lemon and Caribbean blue. And so while I adore Dharma's fluorescent acid dyes, you can mix your own brights using some of those like primaries because fluorescent fuchsia, which I don't think we use today, but fluorescent fuchsia is a primary color as is fluorescent lemon. And so those are colors that you can bring in and play around with mixing to create fun, bright colors in your arsenal. And so again, like playing around with color mixing is something that I really, really enjoy. And so sometimes, even though I have so many pre-mixed colors at my disposal, it's fun to deal with the colors that I have and mix them to create the colors that I want. And that is something I really, really enjoy. I feel like these conclusions are getting pretty long, but I do have one more comment I really want to make. I like doing cold application of colors and sometimes also starting with no acid. This can be really helpful for getting the color to move through the yarn and getting good penetration of the color on the yarn. And it means that you don't have to do flips and apply more color to it. And so if you have, say, a proofing cabinet. This is something that would work really well to create a variegated colorway. And there is a potential here where 
you could go ahead and steam set the yarn, especially if at some point I get a steam insert for these catering steam pans so I could steam set the yarn while it's laid out without having to wrap it in plastic wrap and put it inside the steamer basket more scrunched. That is a way to play around with hand painting to then steam set, which means that you wouldn't have to add more water volume and is therefore a way that you could uh, process more of this color away in a shorter period of time without waiting for the pan to fill up because you could layer <laughs> the yarn inside the steamer basket uh, more than three skeins, if that makes sense. And so that is something that I would love to play around with more in the future, but I feel like every video I film, I come up with, you know, 10 more ideas of things that I could do. So I am definitely not hurting for ideas, but please make sure you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. And if you love the yarn that I dye, uh, go check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Uh, it's filled with yarn that's been featured in my videos and it's a really great way to help support the content here so I can continue to try out a variety of different types of bases and things like that. Um, plus then you get some pretty yarn at the same time. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.